May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We welcome you to worship on this August warm sun, summer Sunday. Those of you who are here in person and those of you who are worshiping with us through live stream, we're so glad to be able to worship together. And if you're new to us, we hope that you'll reach out to us so that we can reach out to you. We'd love to get to know you better. Everyone's invited to stay for a time of fellowship right after church. We'll be right around the corner in Upper Titus Hall. Today is a communion Sunday, so those of you who are worshiping right at 9, at 1015 on live stream, you'll want to be sure to have a little bread or a cracker, some juice or wine with you so that you can partake in the sacrament from home. Please remember, hunger doesn't go on vacation, so continue as you are able to pick up some items and bring them to our red wagons on Sunday morning or any time throughout the week. You can also take your items directly to the Hope of Valley Mobile Food Pantry. It's up the street on, on Main Street. We are serving a lot of folks, and every donation helps to curb hunger for our neighbors, so thank you for that. I know that our children during Vacation Bible School collected a lot of items. Lee White, about how many? Do you have any guess how many? About 200 items were donated by children this week. A whole array, breakfast foods, lunch foods, dinner foods, all sorts of things. That was great. September 4th, just a few weeks away, will be Don Dolan's last Sunday with us. We are going to miss you, Don. We want to encourage everybody to be here on September 4th. We will celebrate Don, express our thanks, and congratulate him on his new position. If you want to contribute for gifts, if you want to send a card, we would love to get those ahead of time so that we can present them to him on that day. You should also know that the personnel committee has just posted the music position that Don is leaving. It's on our website. If you know somebody with piano and organ skills who you think might be a good fit for the position, please check out the website and be sure to speak with me or with Phil. Kim Newport is the chair of our personnel committee. We'd love to hear from you if you have some ideas or some people in mind. Just a note, I'll be on vacation starting next Sunday, the 14th, and Jean Pinto will be available for pastoral care for the two weeks that I'm gone. You can call the church office. If you have a church directory, her phone number is there. Or if it's off hours, if you call the church and ask for my extension, my outgoing message will have her phone number, so don't hesitate to reach out for pastoral care if you need something while I'm gone. Let us worship God. Please stand in body or in spirit for the call to worship. The heavens declare the righteousness of God. The earth declares God's beauty. From the rising of the sun to its setting, God's word shines forth in glory. Let us worship God.
God loves us still and waits in mercy to forgive. Trusting in the promises given at our baptism, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray first as one people and then individually in silent prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, you promise us a life full of blessing but we do not always believe. You incite us to hope, but we fall back into fear. You urge us to give freely, but we cling to what we have. You call us to watch at all times for you, but we grow lazy and self-absorbed. Forgive us. Increase our hope, enlarge our hearts, and keep us alert to the wonders you work in the world every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hear the good news. By faith we have been saved. Our guilty hearts are washed clean, refreshed, revived, and renewed, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Live as ones who are forgiven and freed, giving thanks to God.
As we get ready to hear God's word read and proclaimed, let us, play, let us pray for God's guidance. Holy God, by your spirit, enlighten us, illumine us, inspire us, not for our sakes, but for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom we live. Amen. Our first scripture is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, doing the will of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us all to, alive altogether with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think I see Caleb back there, and maybe Hazel. I don't see any others, but there may be some at home. So if you're at home, come close to the... Uh, TV, and uh, we'll uh, have a time with children. Hey, Lynn. How are you? My name is Pastor Jean. You want to sit down right here? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, this is a special day here. We are going to think about something. Have you ever hoped for something so much that you wanted it really, really badly. Has that ever happened? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. There's a story in the Bible about a man named Abraham. And you know what he wanted so badly? He wanted children. He wanted children of his own. But guess what? It just never seemed to happen. And then God came to talk to him and said to him, Abraham, Abram, if you go to this faraway land and follow where I'm leading you, this promised land, your children will be more than the stars in the sky and, or, the, or the sands on the beach. That's how many descendants you'll be. Like children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. There'll be so many. Now, guess what the only problem with was? Abraham was 75 years old. He was old enough to be a grandfather, right? Whoa. And what do you think Abraham did? What do you think? Did he, did he, did he do what God asked him, do you think? Boom. Boom. He sure did. Yeah, he did. And he went and, and wandered to the promised land. And guess what? Do you think he had a baby right away? No. He was 99 years old before he had even one child. But he did. He had a son named Ishmael. And then sometime later, he had another son named Isaac. And guess what? How, how many descendants do you think he has now, today? Boom! Boom! That many, yes. Billions! You realize he has billions. And they all call him the father of their faith. Because he had faith. And all the people who call themselves Jewish, and all the people who call themselves Muslim, and all the people who call themselves Christians, call Abraham the father of their faith. 
because he had faith and he believed in what God had promised. Pastor um, Nancy's going to talk about faith being the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen. So our faith makes us sure that God will fulfill his promises. And when we have faith, we live in God's world and we follow what God wants us to do. Isn't that wonderful? And then all the things God promises will come true, even if it takes a long time, like this children's sermon. <laughs> Shall we pray? Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of faith, and we pray that we might live in faith and follow you like Abraham. Amen. You can go back to your, your mom. Our second scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. Let's listen together to God's word. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. 
By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land that he had been promised as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of that same promise. For he looked forward to a city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, with Sarah's involvement, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as innumerable as grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith, without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better homeland, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, God has prepared a city for them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tom Wright tells a story of a climbing experience he had. He writes, I thought that we were alone on the hillside. It had been misty for some of our walk, and at other times, sharp little squalls of rain had spat on our faces. But we had kept going, knowing that there would be some difficult climbing later on a rocky crag, likely to be icy this time of year, but hoping that we could get through. We reached a small plateau, and as we did so, the sky cleared for a moment. As we looked around, we noticed quite a large party some way ahead of us. They must have been going at least a couple of hours longer than us, since they had already come to the difficult bit and appeared to have negotiated it successfully. In fact, the last in the line were near the top of the crag, their red jackets standing out against the snow and the ice. I took out the binoculars to have a closer look, and as I brought them into focus, there was a sparkle of light from where the climbers were. Sure enough, ice axes. They had discovered that they needed them to get up the crag. Good thing we had all brought ours. Now we knew, looking ahead to the others, what we would be facing, what we would need to cope with, and the fact that it was possible. They seemed, particularly those who'd already made it up the crag, to be enjoying it. Connecting this climbing experience to Hebrews chapter 11, he wrote, Hebrews has now reached a plateau from which there is an excellent view of those who have gone before. Looking at them, the readers can discover for themselves what's up ahead, what they'll need to cope with, and the fact that when they get there themselves, there will be a great welcome. The ice axe which will be all important in their onward journey, is faith. You can think of the whole book of Hebrews as a sermon series. The writer quotes Old Testament scriptures and speaks of Jesus and then offers exhortations, sermons, based on those passages. The writer wasn't just picking things randomly. They've been selected, selected verses, because they have the potential to keep flickering flame of faith alive. 
The sermon illustrations in chapter 11 were stories of people that they all knew. The audience knew these people, Abraham and Sarah and many others. They were the ancestors in faith. Abraham and Sarah were among those lifted up as examples of those who had faith and kept the faith even in difficult times. How do we know that Abraham and Sarah had faith? Because of their actions, because of what they did. When God called Abraham to get up and go to a new place, a faraway place, with a new relationship with God, to let go of certainty of the familiar and begin a journey of faith with God in new terrain, Abraham and Sarah trusted God, and they went. They lived in this new land as nomads, in tents, literally in tents. They were unsettled people. They looked forward to living in a city with foundations and walls and roofs, a city designed by God. They looked forward to a future and wondered how God was going to fulfill the other promise, that their family would grow and their descendants would be like the stars or the sand on the seashore. It seemed so impossible for this elderly, infertile couple. But God came through for them, and Isaac was born. And each new generation added branches upon branches to this family tree. The family grew, yes. But Abraham and Sarah died before they ever lived a settled life. The preacher in Hebrew says that they did not receive all of the promises, but from a distance they saw them and greeted them. So why this sermon for those Christians that the writer of Hebrews was writing for. Why this sermon? Those hearing or reading these sermons that we call Hebrews, they lived in that first generation after the original apostles of Jesus. Scholars estimate it was written somewhere between the year 60 and 90. For some in the Christian community, faith had stalled. They were in crisis. They needed encouragement to keep on trusting in God, to keep putting their faith in Jesus Christ day after day after day. So then you might ask, why this sermon for us today, here in August of 2022? I'd say in my own mind, it's because many of us, if not all of us, are like Tom and his fellow travelers, his climbers, the path of our lives can be hard. We may wonder if we can handle what's coming next. We can't always see what's ahead of us in life or in our own journey with God. Having some idea of the terrain and getting a glimpse of how others have made it through with faith by faith in Jesus Christ, it's a gift for us now. On Friday, Friday night, we went to see a new musical called Alien 8 at the Bucks County Playhouse. It's about a group of high school students and a teacher and a guidance counselor and some parents, including a pastor and his wife, and people in the community who are struggling. They think it's about a strange young person who shows up in their midst during a tornado that left a third of the town in rubble. A stranger who can't be labeled. Is the stranger a she or a he? A person or an alien? As the musical moves on, we discover that the characters are really struggling with grief and with loss, some of them with guilt. 
a desire to be authentically who they are. They yearn to be accepted and understood and able to talk about hard things. And some of them are struggling with Christian faith. In the face of unspeakable pain, there's an emptiness that seems to leave no place for faith or for hope. It's this alien young person who coaches the main character to offer forgiveness and then to embrace life again. These struggles can happen to any of us. We can go through things that leave us scarred or in pain. And there may be moments or even long spans of time when it's difficult to bring our heads and our hearts together in faith, trusting in God. And without faith, hope can become elusive. That's why a sermon on a sermon about keeping faith in God, keeping faith with God, when the days are tough, when the way forward is unclear, seems spot on for us. Family of God, people of faith, this is for you. Whether your faith is strong and sure or barely recognizable. Hold on to faith with your head and with your heart and with your hands and with your feet, with all of you. For God is holding on to you. It's Christ's very own faithfulness that secured our relationship with God. Faith is a gift to us it's not something you have to create or conjure up on your own. And you don't have to stop asking questions and wrestling with things. You don't have to stop thinking. All you have to do is open your hands to the gift of faith. And then take whatever step it is that God is calling you to. Trusting that God is going to go with you. Trusting in God's goodness and love. For Abraham and Sarah, it was daring to do a new thing and to trust what seemed impossible. It was having hope in God. For the community in Alien 8, it was daring to be honest and authentic, to speak aloud what had been buried. It was to open up to grace and extend forgiveness. What is God calling you to do by faith? Whatever it is, remember that the hymn we sing is true. We sing, great is thy faithfulness. God's faithfulness is great. Our hope is built on that sure foundation we have a divine companion on the journey of life. We have Christian ancestors wearing red jackets, if you will, who have made it to the top, and they help us to have faith and hope that it's real, it's possible with faith. And we have a community, this community, of people walking by faith in God with us. Look around older and younger, strangers and friends. We never walk by faith alone. We have God and we have a community. Amen. In obedience to Christ with love for our neighbors and as an act of faith, let us bring our offerings to God. Those worshiping with us in the sanctuary are invited to place your gifts in the offering plate as the ushers come by. 
For those worshiping from home, you may offer a contribution on our website using the Give Now button, or you may mail in a gift or drop one off at the church office. May each of our gifts individually and together help spread the gospel and make our world more loving and just. Let us pray together. Generous God, you pour out blessings and cover us with gifts of love. Accept these offerings for the sake of your children, and they may proclaim your mercy and embody your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to come to the table and lift up our prayers, we want to have an opportunity to see if any of you have a joy or concern. If so, raise your hand and say your name, and you can share your joy or concern, and we'll wrap it into the prayer. Nancy, I'm just happy to have two of our kids home for a couple weeks. It's really very sweet. That is a special thing, isn't it? I understand that. 
Hi, I'm Carol Meyer. Um, our family has a lot to celebrate this weekend. Um, Galen is celebrating his first year of having a liver, new liver, on Friday. Thank you. And we have our 40th wedding anniversary on Sunday. So all our kids will be coming, and it's, it is a blessing. Thank you. Very exciting. Nancy Mason, I have a joy. The joy took place on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, where we had our first potluck in the heat, and um, the potluck team did a great job. There was not one moment of, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> we had a nice breeze, we had the shade, but thanks go to Lee White, George, Gordon McCoskey, Barb Sargent, our team, and thanks to Carol Meyer, who, who did a lot of helping, and thanks to uh, Phil McMillan, especially for the great entertainment. Anna McCoskey, as usual, sang a beautiful song. Lee White did. And I think Thayer Bohr was also a participant. So um, there was a lot of mingling and a lot of good food. Thanks to everyone who made food. There was practically nothing left. So, and at the end of it all, people just got up and helped clean up and everything. And it really was wonderful. There was a breeze. We had shade. Everything was set up. It, it, it was a wonderful day. And some of our friends came along and neighbors from the other churches that were part of VPS. It was a joyful night. Thank you, Nancy, and to all. Hi, I'm Leanne Thornton. Um, many of you know that my stepfather has had lots of health issues over the years, but um, this summer's been particularly hard, and it doesn't seem like there's much time left. Um, so just prayers for my mother, Bonnie, and Ray. The prayer's going up. Did I miss any? Let us pray. God of time and eternity, we give you thanks and praise that you weave the fabric of your purpose through the warp of our faith and the weft of our faithlessness. You meet us as you met Isaac and Jacob in the tents of our transients, and you prepare us as you prepared Abraham and Sarah for the city of your joy. We make ourselves strangers and foreigners to you. But you greet us in your son, Jesus. In his death and resurrection, you bring us home to be your people. God, we thank you for sending Jesus. His faithfulness inspires our faith. God, we give you thanks for all those things that bring us joy. For vacation Bible school children growing in faith and enjoying fun and friendship and for all of the youth and adult volunteers who shared their time and talents. We thank you for the joy of the potluck on Wednesday that brought us together in person to enjoy good food and good music and good conversations. God, we thank you for all the blessings, for summertime travel, for time to enjoy each other. Lord, we pray for those who are in special need of your care today. We pray for Edna New, that she may be able to get out of the hospital and get back to Brandywine. And we pray for her to experience love and care each day. We lift up those who are undergoing treatment for cancer, for those with mobility challenges. Lord, we pray for those with COVID or monkeypox, God, we lift up everyone who's undergoing a health struggle, a mental health struggle, a physical health struggle, a spiritual health struggle. And God, we pray for those who are grieving, that your love would lift them up today. 
We pray for the world, God. We know that your care is for each and every person. We pray for those who are in harm's way, for those crippled by poverty. We pray for those who are caught in systems of oppression, for those who wield power in ways that hurt others. Lord, we pray for communities here and around the world that have been devastated by weather events. And God, we pray for those whose faith is rocky this morning, for those who have given up faith altogether. And we pray for those who don't know the good news of your love. Thank you, God, for holding on to us and for remaining faithful to us. Bring healing and wholeness and hope to all of your children, and then send us out to live our faith in word and in action. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God is good. God gives us faith to hold on to, and God leads us in the way, and God blesses us. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>